Hi friends, welcome back to Cleaning Therapy. My name is Jenny and today I have a nice relaxing clean with me video for you guys. I have started a little laundry and I'm also pulling out some lemon yogurt muffins from the oven to set inside of my cake stand and I hope you'll join me for this cozy little relaxing clean with me. No matter what kind of week you've had, no matter if it's been hectic or fast paced or slow and easy or whether it's been really good or not so good, I'm just really glad that you're here with me today and I invite you to just kind of take a deep breath and just kind of exhale the week and start fresh this weekend. And if there's any cleaning on your to-do list for this weekend, I really hope you find this video motivating for you to tackle that to-do list. I'm starting here in the kitchen and I'm just clearing off these counters. I made a mess in here while I was baking, so I just want to get everything on these counters put away and cleaned up so that I can get my kitchen all nice and tidy. Because I know that once I do that, the whole house is probably gonna feel just that much cleaner because the kitchen tends to be such a mess. But before I get too far in, I'd like to introduce myself for those of you who are new to my channel. My name is Jenny and I love to do cleaning motivation videos here on YouTube. And I love to clean along with you guys and offer whatever inspiration and motivation that I can here on my channel. So if you like cleaning motivation and homemaking inspiration videos and you're enjoying what you see so far, please make sure to subscribe and that way YouTube will know to recommend these videos to you. And I'd love to see you again on future videos. You can also follow me on Instagram at Jenny Teal as well as at underscore cleaning therapy. And we can get to know each other a little bit better over there as well. Now, as I was unloading these dishes, unfortunately I noticed that they were not clean and we have been having a little bit of problems with our dishwasher recently. And instead of trying to put them all back in there and hoping that it worked this time, we really just need to get a new dishwasher. So we are shopping for one right now and I thought I'd just go ahead and hand wash these dishes. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a lot of dishes to hand wash because these are all the dishes from yesterday that I was unloading, and then we have all the dishes from today dirty as well. We're a family of five, and so I feel like almost all of our dishes are dirty at this one particular moment, which is definitely unusual. So I'm gonna go ahead and tackle these dishes the best I can. And normally I would feel a little bit overwhelmed with a task like this and pretty much dread it. But lately I have just been enjoying doing certain repetitive cleaning tasks and I feel like it's a way that I can practice mindfulness. I remember last fall, I took a walk on my trail outside behind my house. We have a really pretty wooded trail that kind of winds around behind the neighborhood. And I was taking a walk there and I was suddenly just really moved by the sounds of the leaves crunching under my feet. And as silly as it sounds, it was very, very comforting to me. And those sounds brought me joy. And I remember thinking, well, that's unusual. Why would I feel joy because of some leaves crunching under my feet? That's kind of silly. But when I really thought about it, it made sense because it had been so, so long since I had been outside without bringing along my phone to listen to a podcast or to listen to some loud music. Um, it had been forever since I had just allowed myself to take a walk and listen to the nature sounds around me, including the leaves crunching underfoot. And so that was a sound that was very pleasurable and it forced me to be mindful of each step that I took because I was hearing the sounds of the leaves. And it's interesting how there is a connection between mindfulness and joy and happiness. And so any task, any motion, anything we do can actually bring us joy if we pay attention. So here I was just trying to focus on how the water feels, how the dishes feel in my hands, 
and how good it feels to bring something that's dirty and make it clean again. And so just those basic simple thoughts made this task way more pleasurable and enjoyable to complete. So I would encourage you to try that next time you're doing um, a mundane or repetitive task. Um, you can maybe try to focus on what you're doing and just feel how it feels, listen to the sounds, and enjoy with your eyes seeing the transformation from dirty to clean. Uh, you might be sweeping, you might be folding laundry. Any of these kinds of tasks uh, can actually be made into a moving meditation if we're mindful while doing them. It only took me about 40 years, but now all the dishes are done and clean. And I'm gonna go ahead and get them put back in the cabinet. But I just wanted to also remind you guys that we are gonna be having our clean and calm challenge. And I will have a link in my description box so that you guys can sign up via email and you'll be sent the spring cleaning checklist for the clean and calm challenge. So we'll have four weeks to complete the spring challenge and it's going to make your home so nice and clean and calm and we're going to be doing this together so you guys are going to get to see me do this on my channel through my youtube videos and then y'all will be um, following along on your checklist and getting things done in your home as well and it's going to be so refreshing and satisfying to start the new year with a clean and calm space so i'd invite you to head on down to my description box when you're finished watching this video and sign up for the challenge Let me know in the comments um, how your new year has started off and whether or not you have any new year's resolutions or anything you're trying to work on for this year. I'm always so interested and curious to find out what kind of goals um, people set in the new year. Um, as for me, I have kind of set the same goals each year for the past three years pretty much now and I have not completed really any of them so I'm actually uh, you know just in the spirit of not setting myself up to fail I'm actually kind of rethinking the whole resolution thing um, not that there's anything wrong with resolutions but for me personally I think that it may be more effective to rewrite some of the stories that I tell myself so for example, one of the resolutions that I keep setting for myself is to go back and finish school. Um, I had been in college and then I had left school to have my first child and then I went back to school and then left again for my second child. That was now 13 years ago and um, I haven't been back since. So I always end up with that on my resolutions and I still never go back. And it's not a matter of willpower, I think, so much is it's a story that I'm telling myself that it's too late for me to go back, or I'm just too old for all that, or I don't have time, I need to dedicate myself more to my children, or, you know, why go back and start a career when I will only be retiring 10 years after I started. Um, there's so many stories that I tell myself and that is a worn out narrative. That's a narrative that actually doesn't work for me anymore and it's not helping me to achieve my goals. So instead of just you know, writing down start school again and then not doing it, I'm actually gonna rewrite that story that I keep telling myself. And I'm gonna write it to where I go back to school and I believe in myself and I believe in something that I'm passionate about and really wanna do and I see myself having 10 wonderful years of doing it. 
and enjoying it so much that I would never regret starting late. And then I tell myself the story that 10 years turns into 15 and then 20, and I end up wanting to do this and work longer than most people because I'm enjoying it so much. And then I have no regrets because I accomplished something that I set my mind to, and I was really proud of that. And that's the story that I'm rewriting to kind of tell myself that this can look differently. It doesn't have to look the way I've been thinking about it. I can think about it differently and therefore have a different outcome. So that's what I'm trying this year. And my husband's doing the same thing. And we're having a lot of fun just rewriting our stories and kind of dreaming a bit. And here's my youngest, Alex. He just had to come in and plop himself down and hang out for a little bit, let you guys enjoy his cute little PJs. <laughs> and then he was off again doing his thing. So I'm so glad that my kitchen is clean and calm and it really does look nice and clean in here and it feels very relaxing to be in here. And now I'm going to move on in to the living room and tackle our messy office. So Alex has been really enjoying coloring lately and he loves to just pull out all of his coloring books and crayons and stickers and just kind of go wild in here in the office. So I'm going to get that all tidied up really quick and then I just need to move on to the uh, sofa area and tidy that up as well. And make sure you stay tuned for next week because we will be doing an entire office declutter and organize and clean. I mean, the space is going to get a transformation because my husband's desk, I always call it the hoarder's desk because there's stuff crammed everywhere, like in every single drawer. And mine just needs some really good organization, but his needs some really good decluttering. So I'm going to be tackling that next week and I'm taking you guys along with me for the motivation. So make sure you are subscribed and ready for that video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have been doing any decluttering and organizing yet this year. That's one of the main things on my to-do list that I'm most excited about is decluttering and paring down and making everything just more clutter-free and minimal. So let me know what you guys have been working on and how you've been enjoying it. Here over by the sofa, Alex had spilled out all of his flashcards. Um, this is kind of the usual mess that we've been having um, each evening. And I just wanted to get that all cleaned up and put back in his activity drawer. I'm really not trying to prevent messes like this too much because I understand it's just a phase of life and he's only gonna be two for just a little bit. And then he'll be cleaning up all of his own messes. We're already teaching him now how to clean up his own messes, but he's just not doing it on camera yet. But once I got that all cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and fluff up the cushions on my sofa. And I'm still kind of enjoying a little bit of winter decor here and there. 
but it'll all be coming down really soon for our spring cleaning challenge. So if you are interested in joining, it's going to begin in February. So the first week of February is week one for our challenge and we'll have our homes all spring cleaned and deep cleaned and ready for spring decorations on March 1st. So if you'd like to join me again, just check my description box and I'll send you your very own checklist uh, that you can use to keep track while you're doing the challenge. So here on the coffee table, I'm just using the Method Wood for Good and the Almond Scent to polish off the top, and then I'll move on to sweeping. And sweeping is definitely one of those moving meditation type chores that I actually enjoy when I put my mind to it, especially when there's this much dirt and crumbs and all kinds of stuff on the ground. It's definitely satisfying to get that all swept up and into the dustpan. And now I'm moving into the dining room and I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum off this area rug and sweep these floors as well. And then my towels will be coming out of the dryer and I'm gonna go ahead and get those all folded. For me, I do laundry six days a week, so that spreads it out just enough to where I don't feel like I'm always doing laundry, but having that one day off a week is pretty much necessary for me to not go crazy and feel like I'm doing laundry every single day. So I know the one load a day method is really smart, but I actually don't want to do laundry every single day. It actually is nice to just take a break and say I don't do any laundry today. And so I have a six day a week routine. And since I have a family of five, I just, each person gets their own day for laundry. And then on the sixth day, I do all the towels and the sheets and any ironing that needs to be done. And so that's the way we've been doing it for a while now. And I really like it. So today was the towels and sheets day and I washed the sheets earlier, but I just needed to finish up with these towels. And of course I don't stick to it perfectly. No one sticks to anything perfectly. So sometimes I have to do two different people on the same day just to kind of play catch up. No big deal at all. I'm still only doing like two loads. So it's just really not a big deal for me if I fall behind a little bit. Um, if I fall behind a lot, that would be a little bit of work, but just falling behind one day really isn't a big deal at all. And so I can catch back up really quickly. Let me know in the comments how you like to do laundry and what works best for you.
and my floors needed a really good mopping. So I decided to tackle that tonight while the house was nice and calm and quiet. And so I have my O Cedar Spin Mop and then I have the Method Floor Cleaner in the Almond Scent, um, the floor cleaner for wood floors. And it smells really, really good and it does a great job um, in my opinion. So I went ahead and did the dining room and the living room. And now that the main living areas of the home are clean and calm, I'm going to go ahead and light these candles and get ready to enjoy this space. So thank you so much for joining me today as I cleaned my house. And I hope that it provided you a little bit of motivation and encouragement to create a clean and calm space in your house as well. And maybe this relaxing video helped you to fall asleep at night, or maybe it helped you to relax after a long work day or work week. But I just hope that it provided some kind of value for you today and that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate you so, so much and I hope to see you again on the next video. Bye.